some examples might be, or some questions might be, really be very easy. Calculate, or given the geometric series, calculate the sum to infinity. So if it's geometric, we must surely find a constant ratio. So 1 divided by 3 is a third. Okay, a third divided by 1, <laughs> anything divided by 1 is still itself, is also a third. So I see definitely a constant ratio. Okay, with our first term is an A, uh, the A is 3, and our constant ratio is a third. So the sum to infinity, which we just had a look at the formula, here's our formula, where our first term is 3, divided by 1 minus my constant ratio is a third. So 3, 1 minus a third is 2 thirds. When I divide with a fraction, one of my students taught me, you tip in times, I like that. So in the top we actually have 3 over 1, so we've got 3 over 1, now we tip. In other words, instead of having 2 over 3, we've got uh, 3 over 2 in times. So that in the end I've got 3 times 3 is 9 divided by 2. If you wanted to go to decimals, 4 and a half. So if I were to add up these numbers for whether 3 plus 1 is 4 already, plus a third is 4 and a third, plus a ninth is whatever that is, but I'll eventually my answer will actually get to 4 and a half if I had time. Okay, forever. It's probably what people like Hitler is going to do in hell. Uh, have to calculate that for you. <laughs> Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, consider the series. Okay, and maybe you can't read that. So, because I'm having trouble reading it, so let me rewrite it here. Here's the series. And going from 1, 2 times a half. X to the power n. Now they ask for which values will this series converge? And this one is a total scorcher because immediately you have no idea what's going on. There's a sigma notation, and since when is there a sigma notation? And uh, well, uh, let's just go and get rid of the sigma notation. Sigma notation is simply a um, indication of what I should do. It says add up all the terms. Which terms? Well, I'll start with n equal to 1 and see what we get. So, first, n is equal to 1, which means I've got 2 times a half times x to the power 1 plus 2 times a half times x to the power 2 plus. Uh, or all of writing on x question times a half times x cubed. Okay, let's just hide that one. That one is, is late as fun. Okay, <coughs> I only need three terms. It will go on for much more, obviously, to infinity. So let's just solve that. The, the, the exponent of 1 just means I can uh, get rid of the brackets immediately. Um, I've got one bracket, so I can multiply in the 2, so that I just get x. Okay, because 2 times a half is just 2. Okay, in the next one, however, when the, the exponent gets distributed, so I have a half times a half is a quarter, so x times x is x squared. So I get 1 over 4 times x squared. And 2 times that would then give me a half x squared. Next term. And the next term say uh, it's a half times a half times a half. Half cubed is 1 over 8. And 1 over 8 times 2 will give me 1 over 4. And this time I'll have x cubed. And this will go on and on. I suspect the next one will be 1 over 8. x to the power of 4 plus and that will go on and on. 
okay? And they're asking us in the first question, for which values of x will the series converge? For which values of x will the series converge? Well, what are they asking us? They're asking us that our series must converge. We know for a geometric, the series can only converge if my arithmetic, sorry, if my constant ratio is less than 1 but bigger than negative 1. Okay, and I have a formula for my constant ratio. It's my second term divided by my first term. Must be bigger than negative 1 and smaller than 1. But I have formulas, or well, values for T2. This is T2, and that is T1. So let's substitute in there. T2 we saw as a half x squared. T1 is x. And we want that to be less than 1, but bigger than negative 1. Okay, so a half x squared divided by x divides into itself once, and into x squared it goes uh, once and leaves an x behind. So there's two factors of x in the numerator, which cancels with 1 in the denominator, so I get that a half x must be bigger than 1, uh, or smaller than 1 and bigger than negative. <coughs> so to get x on its own, we divide both sides with a half. Well, not both sides, all three sides actually. With a half. Keep in mind, if there was a negative, we had to change the signs. And things would have been much different, actually. So here they cancel. So I get that x must therefore be less than 1. Divided by half, a half goes twice into 1, and negative twice into negative 1. And there we go. Those are the values that x can take, so that any value between negative 2 and 2 will cause this sequence to, or series, to converge. Now they say, okay, x is equal to a half, if x is equal to a half. Calculate the sum uh, to infinity of the series. Oh, that's, that's fine. Okay, so in other words, we must calculate the sum to infinity. We know a formula, a very simple formula, 1 minus r. We just don't know what a and r is. Or do we? Well, a is the first term. Our first term is x. r is our constant ratio. We've calculated our constant ratio here. A T2 divided by T1 and it ended up being uh, this half x was our constant ratio. Now they say, so in other words, A is equal to x. My constant ratio, when I calculated it early, it was a half x. So every time I'm multiplying with a half x, that's why my second term is a half x squared because I multiplied these two together. Okay. But we have a value for x. x is a half. They just told us if x is a half. My constant ratio is a half times x, which is a half times a half, which is a quarter. Okay, so I substitute in my values. I get a half divided by 1 minus a quarter. <coughs> okay, 1 minus a quarter gives me a half over three quarters and here's the tip and times business again so I get a half that is actually multiplied by four over three instead of being divided by three over four and when I do so I get an answer of four over six or even more accurate two over three okay I don't think that is too bad if you just use the theory very accurately. Shall we try another one? 